Good morning, everybody. We are wait. Monica is running this meeting, and we cannot hear her, even though she's unmuted. So there are technical difficulties being worked on. It seems. Ray, I see your chat, and we picked Zoom to avoid problems. That's why it's not Teams, but apparently Zoom is having problems also. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Technology. Sorry about that. I didn't realize that we were in Zoom. Yeah, no. It's usually right. the, with the county, you guys, your defaults are usually Teams, so I was already blaming the, the, the default. <laughs> I know. And try to correct, and look what happens. <laughs> oh, it's we Friday. There we go. That's it, right, Paz? Yeah. Find trouble. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Um, looks like Monica is back. Can you? Can you? Can you? Okay. I think you guys can hear me. Yeah. Just an echo. Monica, do you want to turn up your volume on your computer? I did. Hold on a second. Hello. 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 Okay. Okay. Does that work? Yay. Hey. Yay. Oh, my gosh. I'm so sorry. This is such a mess. Um, what a way to start. Yay. Um, this is why I wanted to do Teams. Yep, yep. I just have to throw that, that out there, but we're doing Zoom, so here we are. Um, welcome, welcome everybody. Vanessa, I really hope that you can um, open the PowerPoint and steer because I don't think it's going to work for me, um, if that's okay. Okay, so welcome again. So sorry about that. Um, technology, so fun. Um, so yes, we're here. Um, this training officially launches our new amazing Housing for Health Housing Assistance Fund um, that's available to, it looks like somebody's in the waiting room. I do not have host privileges right now, I don't believe. So if someone could, whoever is the host, please let people in. Um, so anyway, back to this. Um, I am not sure if you signed up for this training via the announcement from BitFocus um, or through our Housing for Health Partnership newsletter. Um, but I just wanted to, either way, I just wanted to start by reiterating um, what those announcements said and that, that the, currently this resource is only available to HMIS users. Um, we have plans to expand to non-HMIS users, but we're just not there yet. So if you're not currently a licensed HMIS provider, this training might not be that useful to you now, but you're welcome to stay and learn. Um, so um, that said, um, you know, we've just been really working on this for a long time, um, redesigning an older flex 
Fund program that has been in existence for the past couple of years that was called the Rehousing Wave Flexible Spending Fund. Um, I'm sure many of you here are familiar with that program and have been using it to help your participants um, by tapping into those resources. And um, also some of you may be new to Flex Funds. Um, and so this training is really intended to get you all on track and all on the same page um, with how you can now access this improved program of assistance um, to help people, the people that you're working with. So um, I think you got the notice that this, this training is recorded. recorded um, and we're going to make it available, post it on our Housing for Health Partnership website so that you can go back and review it whenever needed. And um, also for the future new requesters, um, they can review it and see it on our website or any folks that weren't able to make today's live training. Um, so with that said, let's get started. Um, next slide, please. Introductions. Okay. So first, we'd like to have an idea um, and a record of who's in attendance today, um, but it, there seems to be quite a few people. So instead of um, uh, opening this up, I think to save time for us to focus on the presentation's content, um, could you just use the Zoom, Zoom feature, chat feature, thanks, Brother Joseph. Um, let us know your name, um, agency, your role, and um, whether you're or not you're new to Flex Funds or if you are a seasoned, seasoned user with the old uh, model that we had. Um, and that would be so helpful and nice. Really, really nice to see so many people today. Um, I forgot to introduce myself. I'm Monica Lippi. I'm a Housing for Health Manager with the County Human Services Department of Housing for Health division. Um, my, I, I, I focus mo more on what we call connection services, um, and so that includes supporting um, programs um, uh, and partners that are working on prevention, shelter, uh, outreach, um, and coordinated entry. So the front door to our services um, and flex fund is, or sorry, the housing assistance fund is part of that area of Housing for Health. And so um, me and my very small but mighty team are your county partners when it comes to this um, initiative. So, um, all right. So just a couple of housekeeping notes. If you are currently unmuted, please mute yourself now. And, and also just please wait until the end of this training to ask your questions, or you can put them in the chat box as we go. And I'll try to do my best to answer them in the end. Um, all right, so let's move on. Next slide, please, Vanessa. Okay, so the purpose of today's training is to provide information on how to use the Housing Assistance Fund as a tool for preventing and ending homelessness. Um, and we will cover today, we're gonna talk about um, key concepts of housing problem solving. Um, housing problem solving is a really important component to the Housing Assistance Fund program and, and we'll cover the reasons why. Um, we're going to explain the eligibility and the types of expenses that are permissible for the Housing Assistance Fund. Then we'll spend some time showing you how to make requests and um, and we'll review what, what the tracking and documentation requirements are for this. And then we'll end with plenty of time, I'm sure, for questions and answers. So um, that's really the overview of what we're doing today. Uh, next slide, please. All right, so to start, um, what is the housing problem solving approach? Um, so I just um, wanted to really talk about why we're starting with this, with housing problem solving. Um, this is really because we want providers seeking to access the housing assistance fund um, really to 
to really thoroughly explore all of alternatives available for a participant before requesting financial assistance. Um, the pot of money tied to the housing assistance fund is it's not endless. Um, I wish it was, but that's not the reality. And requests will only be approved when we have funding available. So this is really why it's, it's really important to explore all available resources for your participants prior to requesting this assistance. And having housing problem solving conversations is really one critical way, a really critical way to do this. Um, you know, a lot of people don't know this, but many housing crises are, are solved without the use of financial assistance. Um, you know, people are really often a lot more resourceful than often thought. And, and um, that's really not known unless those of us that are helping in the helping profession start with a housing problem solving approach. Um, if we started all our conversations with participants with the offer to solve their housing issue with these funds, we deplete them, these resources rapidly, uh, which would essentially eliminate the ability to help others who have no other existing support. So that's why we really want you to deploy housing problem solving skills and that you have a solid understanding of this approach. So what is it? Um, here, you know, in, in its broadest definition, housing problem solving is a strategy that assists individuals to identify opportunities to resolve their crisis without becoming homeless, or if they are already homeless, quickly divert them to a stable housing solution. Uh, it's not a program, but rather a strategy. Uh, and the primary goal is to help them exit homelessness using personal and community resources to find an immediate solution. And then secondary, we want to reserve the extremely limited number of shelter spaces and housing programs for, for those that are most vulnerable and that, that don't have available support. Next slide, please. All right. So, Housing problem solving can be done at any time, and it's not recommended to be just a one-time interaction. Um, but rather, the approach really should be done at any time a person interacts with a homeless response system, whether that's when first met by an outreach report provider, um, and then continuously every every meeting after that, or or when they first present a shelter. And these conversations are intended to continue all the way through resolution. Um, housing problem solving really should shape all of our interactions, or in other words, lay the groundwork for, for both participants and providers to make goals and to ultimately help participants be successful on, on their housing pathways. Um, so some examples of housing problem solving supports are helping people get vital documents uh, such as identification or birth certificates. Since, since these can be critical for, um, for obtaining income through work or benefits. Um, um, another way housing problem solving can support is, is helping people reconnect with friends and family or other people in their lives. So many people's homelessness has been resolved this way. I've heard of so many special heartwarming stories of providers helping people reconnect with support that they thought were long gone from their lives. Um, and then, of course, financial assistance can also be a housing problem solving tool to helping people resolve their situation. Um, and then it's folded here that it's really important that all providers are transparent with their participants about the availability of all potential resources and the reality of immediate housing options, which as I know you know in Santa Cruz are incredibly slim. Um, and we want to be open about all this so that we can really help people focus on finding personal solutions that they can tap into. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, uh, so as I mentioned, housing problem solving can be accomplished without accessing the housing assistance fund. Um, mainstream benefits and resources in the community should always be explored first. So 
For example, if a person's not you're working with is not in the Welfare to Work program, which has like a ton of resources available for um, families on cash aid, um, uh, cash assistance, um, how work. Um, <laughs> providers should really explore whether they can access support through that program first. Um, if a family is not yet on cash aid, uh, providers should help connect them with our department's employment and benefit services division so they can apply. Um, same with unhoused single individuals, uh, you know, exploring whether they have general assistance, CalFresh, Medi-Cal, sometimes, not always, but, but sometimes accessing these benefits, these mainstream benefits, mainstream benefits and their associated services um, provides a sufficient amount of support to help stabilize a participant. Um, so, you know, it's really important to, to try to help your participants get access to anything available. Um, but if it is just determined that uh, that their crisis, their housing crisis can be resolved, um, uh, can't be resolved with any other resources, the housing assistance funds may be utilized. Um, and so, some of the examples here, you know, we'll cover, we'll go into more detail on this later, but we can, um, the fund can cover rental deposits, eviction prevention, assistance with bills, groceries, or rent, uh, to their family. So basically, whatever, within reasonable limits, the family or friends that they're reconnecting with, um, whatever they need to feel comfortable letting the participant move in. The relocation, other another community with a safe, viable housing option. Uh, these are just some of examples. So again, we'll we'll go into depth uh, later about this. So, um, next slide, please, Martha. All right. Um, well, so there there is a ton of literature and training online dedicated to the housing problem solving approach and and I really encourage those of you that are new to this concept to seek further training than what is just provided in in this presentation today um, the the Connecticut coalition to end homelessness has a great free online training resource library that that includes a free web, a few webinars on housing problem solving they call it diversion um, but also that, that our division is working on plans um, to deliver future training specifically on this topic, um, since there really is just so much more to it than what I'm providing here. Um, but until then, another resource is the National Alliance to End Homelessness website. They have a lot of stuff on, on housing problem solving. Um, and here are what they publish as six steps to a housing problem solving conversation. Um, so step one, you're going to want to introduce yourself and the process um, and set reasonable expectations for what you can provide um, and the time you can spend with them. And then step two is to practice active listening. Um, make sure you have the time needed to hear their story. Um, I know for some participants, this might, might be a long conversation, and some people are really open to talk to anyone that will listen. Um, they'll spill their life story immediately. Others may need a little prompting, so you're going to want to ask open questions, open-ended questions, um, and rephrase so they know that you're actively listening. And then step three, um, you know, these recommendations or sorry, these conversations um, can often really get hard um, and get and they can na naturally lead into a discussion about all the challenges a person has. It's really important that 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 you hear this piece of a person's story if they're wanting you to know, but but you really want to make sure you're guiding the conversation to explore a person's strengths and supports. Um, so focus on what they have more than what they need and validate their strengths and accomplishments. And then next slide, step four um, is moving forward. So you're going to want to tap into your motivational interviewing techniques and, and list and discuss options to set um, attainable goals. 
step aside, create connections, summarize your conversation, talk about what you can can't what can be done now, and and identify any potential supports you can help connect them to. And then step six, you'll you'll want to wrap up by reviewing what you discussed and outline the next steps for both you and the participant. And then when appropriate, schedule a follow-up meeting so that you can review your progress. So what is the Housing Assistance Fund? What you really want to know about, I'm sure that's what we're really here today to learn about. So what is it? Um, we can skip to the next slide. Um, so, Basically, it is a, a pool of various funding sources um, that the Housing for Health Division manages. Oh, oh, never mind. I saw, never mind. Technology. Okay, sorry. I saw a little pop up that said I was muted, but I forgot I'm calling in from my phone. So, <laughs> um, it's a pot of money that we're managing, um, and it can be used for a variety of ways for all different types of populations. Um, each of the spending sources tied to this this um, uh, this program has different requirements, but you don't have to worry about all that. We control which resources tied to each specific request on the back end. Um, it's it's designed to assist eligible households obtain and maintain housing, and it's flexible so that the funds can be tailored to meet the unique needs of each um, household experiencing housing crisis. Um, next slide. So, I'm gonna get my uh, charger before my phone dies, because um, I'm using that all in, sorry guys. Um, this uh, training today, we based it on policies um, that we wrote for this program. And the policy document um, can be found on our website, housingforhealthpartnership.org, or at least um, I looked this morning, I'm not sure if our website people have had a chance to, to get this set um, they were supposed to this morning so at, at the very least it should be available this afternoon um, and so we've created this new web page on our website it's a full section dedicated to the housing assistance fund um, this is going to include the policy the new request form and it will host this recording like I mentioned um, as well as other supplemental documentation. So this is gonna be kind of like your portal for all things housing assistance fund. Um, and, and so please take the time after this training to navigate to the website later this afternoon um, and, and read the policy when you can for additional details involved with the housing assistance fund. Um, next slide. Okay, so there are three different types of roles and responsibilities involved with this. Um, we, the Housing for Health Division, oversees the funds and we receive all the incoming requests and make approval decisions. The Community Action Board, CAB, uh, disperses the funds on behalf of Housing for Health. They usually cut checks that can either be sent to vendors or picked up by providers at um, either their Watson, their offices in Watsonville or, or our HSC office at MLA. Um, or they also have a credit card they can use for online purchases. And then provider agencies, all of you, um, request funds on behalf of your participants. Okay, next slide. All right, so I'm sure you're all now wondering how is someone eligible to receive this assistance and what can the funds cover? Um, I'll start with eligibility. Um, next slide. Vanessa, please. Okay, so there's three different ways somebody can be, um, three criteria for, for being eligible. Either 
they are um, currently experiencing homelessness as defined signed by HUD, or the household is at risk um, as also defined by HUD. And if they are at risk of experiencing homelessness, you'll have to submit um, a, an at, a, a housing ver a, at risk of housing verification form. And this this can right now can be seen that's on the attachment 7.1 of the policy. We're gonna separate that out and create a standalone document that will be on the website. Um, so you'll wanna complete that um, if they're at risk. Um, or a third way that you can be, a participant can be eligible is um, if they've recently exited homelessness within the last year. All right, so next slide. Um, now we'll talk about what we can cover. Eligible expenses. Um, there's a lot. So I'll start with move-in assistance. Um, the fund, the fund is usable for security deposit, head deposit, utility costs. Um, this in, this is in, includes startup costs or past pay, past due payments if these unpaid costs impact a participant's ability to secure utilities in a new location. Um, housing application fees with within reasonable rates, um, renters insurance, essential home furnishings, um, and there's an attachment in the policy that shows all the different types of home items that we've purchased in the past under the old program. Um, and we'll cover that a little bit further in a second. Um, and then um, it also covers uh, non-emergency, non-medical transportation related to the participants who move into housing, so housing, um, such as by use of a of a moving company. So those are kind of those are the types of move-in assistance costs we can cover. Uh, next slide is um, free eviction. We can we can pay for up to three months in rental arrears. But you'll want the providers are going to need to submit um, a written notice from the landlord um, that that confirms the person is in arrears and may be evicted because of this. And they also need to agree um, that they will per continue to rent to the participant if we cover their back pay or back rent. Um, so that's pre-eviction. Pre um, rental assistance, uh, we can cover up to three months forward rent, and that is flexible on a case-by-case -case basis. Um, and what else next is, I think, oh, housing maintenance, yes. There are um, costs, these are, these are costs usually for items needed to make a home livable. Um, we know that sometimes the units our participants are able to obtain need additional things um, unique to, to the individual. So for example, they, they might need non-slip floor mats if the floors are slippery in their unit and they're prone to falling, um, or we've covered the cost of blackout curtains for someone that worked in the evenings and they needed to make sure their room was dark in the day so that they could sleep. Um, if someone has medical needs, we can purchase them a hospital bed, a foyer lift, um, or we can also pay for unit modifications uh, to meet accessibility needs, such as ramps and grab bars. Um, but please note that you will need to obtain landlord permission if the units require those such modifications. Um, prior to us approving those kinds of requests. Um, all right, next slide. Okay, uh, relocation. So some of you may have heard of Palmer Bound, and that's really essentially what this is. We can, relocation costs can be requested um, for a confirmed housing opportunity Stay with a, a lease in another community or housing with a friend or family member who is committed to housing the participant for an indefinite period of time. Um, and so some examples of relocation costs that the fund will cover are bus tickets, airfare, 
gas. Um, we use the federal reimbursement rates for gas, um, lodging and meals while traveling to confirmed housing. Um, so those are some of the relocation costs we can cover. Please note that you will need to confirm um, and verify the participant's housing opportunity, um, which means that you that might mean ha having a conversation um, um, uh, with someone's support and that they're moving in with, and and you'll need to also submit a budget for travel. Uh, next slide. Okay, other. So um, we can cover fees associated with securing critical documents um, needed to apply for housing, so such as driver's licenses, state identification cards, birth certificates, student records. Um, it can cover bus passes up to three months for specific needs related to housing goals. Um, work, you know, in particular too. Uh, um, essential health care items when not covered by a participant's medical plan. So a lot of, I know a lot of plans only cover eyeglasses once a year, but you know, if someone breaks their glasses, we can purchase another pair. Um, medical equipment, co-pays, transportation, educational materials, workforce equipment, or other items needed to meet housing goals, so long as they're not already available through other means. Um, basically, anything that um, is needed, if there's a case to be made that someone needs something that's not discussed today and, and it could help them resolve their housing situation, make the case and we'll see what we can do. Um, so, yeah, okay, next slide. Um, all right, guidelines for rental payments. Um, there are two essential guidelines um, when making rental payment requests. You must discuss long-term stability with participants. Uh, we want to make sure the participant has a way to maintain their housing after our assistance ends. And two, requests exceeding 150% fair market rent must provide, provide justification both in the terms of it being reasonable for the unit and and for the likely sustainability of the situation for the participant. And we have a link to fair market rental rates embedded in the policy document, so please review this if needed. Um, next slide, please. Okay. And we have some caps of our assistance. Um, Limit. We have some limits annually, uh, and they are what is shown here. We uh, for households of just a one person, we can spend up to five thousand um, dollars. If they have roommates, we can add an additional five hundred per you know per additional adult household member. Um, households with minor children, we can spend up to eight thousand. And then in addition to that, we can cover essential home furnishings up to $1,500 um, plus $500 for additional household members. Um, so these amounts, um, you know, maximum amounts may vary uh, on a case-by-case -case basis. Um, and you might tap into the assistance um, early in the year and, and only request for a single individual, three thousand for moving costs and deposits and rent. Um, that that means that they have another additional two thousand that you can return and submit additional requests later on in the year um, until the household spending limits are reached. Um, so those are the limits. Next slide. Okay. So now we'll cover how. How to make your request. Um, this is just an overall process flow of the way it works. Uh, it starts with you all, providers request, um, you work on a request with the participant and then submit it to Housing for Health. Us, Housing for Health, we review applications and approve um, or deny requests and ask 
for further details if needed. Then if it's approved, it goes on to TAB, who will then disperse the approved funds. And then finally in the end, the provider your end, on your end and TAB enter transactions in, in each my end. And I'll, I'll show you guys, I'll, I'll give you a little bit more details on that in, in a little bit. Um, the first, I think that the next slide, we're, I think we're going to now, yeah, um, Daniel Wilson is my colleague with the Human Services Department. He really helped us to create this new form uh, in DocuSign, and he is going to show you all um, how to access it and complete it. Are you here, Daniel? I am. Thank you, Monica. Good morning, everybody. Okay. Thank you all for coming. I'm going to share my screen real quick here. Uh, so, okay. I cannot share while somebody else is sharing. Let's see. There we go. Uh, Vanessa, can you make him a host? We've got it. I think I got it. Everybody okay, can see my okay. screen? Oh, good. So it's on the website. Yeah, this is a little <laughs> sneak peek of the landing page um, for the Housing Assistance Fund. You're going to find your Housing Assistance Fund policy down here on this tab. And then to access our new form, you're going to click here. It's going to take you over to a new screen through DocuSign. And you're going to put in your email address. Put in mine. And it'll take you to another screen. And this will be the actual form that you're going to start filling in. And here we go. OK, so all the boxes in red are required on the form. So we try to make it real easy for you guys to know what's required and what's not. Um, so you're going to put in your client information date of birth, client, HMIS number, program information. Down here, you'll see some not required, but um, optional fields. So if you have that information, go ahead and put it in. Put in the type of how many funds are requested, what type of request it's gonna be. Um, we have some other fields that will pop up depending on what item you choose here. So if you have pre-eviction um, rental assistance, we wanna know the client address. Um, if you're choosing other, another field will pop up for other. And then continue to go down the form, filling in your stuff. Payable to, who it's going to be payable to. Um, how the payment's going to be processed. So if you're going to mail it, please put in the address here. Or if we want to mail it out, put in the address. And if you want to pick it up, you're going to put in who it's going to be picked up by and choose a pickup location, South County or North, North County. And then the appropriate address will fill, populate on the form as well. We keep going down, other notes, any kind of information you want to add in to us to let us know, please add it there. It's an optional field. Any type of documentation that's required. Um, so not all requests will require documentation, so I didn't make these all um, mandatory fields, but the ones um, that do require, make sure that you put in the uh, documentation. So if a W-9 is required, go ahead and put it in here. Click on that, and a new little icon will pop up. You upload your file, choose. And it's been uploaded. And now you can go and upload multiple files in one spot. So if you have a bunch of stuff that you want to put in, you can just click it and put it in here. Or if you want to go and ad attach them individually, you can do that as well. So um, either way, you can all put it in one or individually. And then any other documentation notes? And then you click Submit. And that's it. Easy peasy. And again, if for some reason you guys forget to put in something that's required, it will tell you that you have to go back and put in the information. So um, oops, let me go back up here. And so it will tell you, hey, go back up and put in the information for you. Now, once the form is submitted and completed, it will go on to us for um, decision. And then once we decide it, it will then go on to CAB for disbursement and payment. And then everybody, once everything's done, everybody will get a copy of the completed form. This is just a test form, so I put in test information for all the fields. And I'll show you the routing information at the bottom, everybody that's touched it. And I didn't put any um, sample documentation on this one, so it doesn't show that, but it will show the sa sample documentation in as well. Any questions? Oh, 
it looks it looks like Brian had a question in the chat. Um, shouldn't there be a box for the case manager's name in addition to their phone number and email? Is that not there? Can we go? Yeah, um, under the case manager name, if different from request, it just says phone and email. There's no box for a name. Okay, we can add that. Thank you. Oh, we'll we'll fix that. Yeah. Yep. It, there We've, needs to be a box. I don't know what happened to it. If it's not there, then we'll. I see the. It says name, but if there's no text box, we'll enter one in there. Yeah, and we we are going to be revising this form. And also, if you guys see anything that you want to can recommend to change, we would love to hear anything back as far as uh, anything that we can do to fix or make the process more smooth for you guys. Um, so there. Any other questions? Thanks, Daniel. Um, it looks like Father Joseph says, when will this be live? It looks like it's live now as of like, I don't Perfect. know, this morning, like <laughs> middle of the training. So, because I know I looked this morning, it wasn't. So um, it's live. So you can get to it by, Daniel, can you show them real quick? Here, this page is, if you go hover over the, so this is the housingforhealthpartnership.org website. And if you hover over, yeah, for providers. Oh, how did you get here? It should be you in know, that what, this, menu. This is the link you sent me, Monica. So this might not be the actual live page oh, yet. Oh, this is, okay. Yeah. It's not live yet. Sorry, guys. Sorry. Um, oh, it will be live today, I promise. But And the way you get there is you go to that um, for providers. Yeah. Um, menu and it's going to be in there. It's you know, called the Housing Assistance Fund. And this is the page. And this is how you get the form. And, it, and this is where the policy will live. Um, and the training will be recorded. You can access it again here. And um, also those standalone documents that I mentioned that are tied to requests that you, you know, the at risk verification form. And there's another standalone, oh, um, essential items document. These are attachments within the policy. They're embedded in the policy, but we're going to have, to have separate um, links to those in on the website. Um, okay, you'd like us to comment. All right. Okay, I'm going to turn um, it back over. Thank you. Thank you so much for showing us that. Thank you for all the work you have. There's a lot to it, so I appreciate all of your help. Anytime. With that. Thank you. Yeah. Um, all right. Uh, Vanessa, can we go back to the slide? Thank you. Um, what's next? I can't remember. Um, we can uh, go to the next slide. Oh, okay, yes. Yeah. We wanted to cover what is required um, uh, documentation for, with your request. So for um, rental assistance, payments that exceed $600 must include a W-9 form completed by the property owner. Um, it's not, well, it's not required um, um, it is recommended that a W-9 form be included for all rental assistance payments, um, but really it's mostly just required when it's um, 600 or more. Um, and then uh, we need a signed lease, and the lease needs to reflect uh, um, you know, current laws and policies related to rentals, and the landlord must have the legal right to rent the property. Um, requests must include documentation of how rent costs will be sustainable for participants so a written documentation of the conversation with them is sufficient um, and for those that have not yet moved in um, an intent from the landlord to rent including the lease start date rental amount and deposit amount will suffice um, um, all right and then more, there's more, um, for pre-eviction assistance requests, we must see a pay um, or quit notice. 
the vendor payment request must include receipts for all purchases. Um, request for utility payments must include a copy of the bill, including account information and a copy of the tenant's um, lease that shows that the utilities are the tenant's responsibility. Um, requests for moving assistance must include a quote from the, from the moving service um, and requests for safety and accessibility items must be accompanied by written verification um, of proof that of need of need and proof that insurance will not cover the expense. Um, next slide. Okay, so when purchasing home furnishings and household items, um, Amazon is the preferred vendor for this. Uh, you can use others if you de if desired, but we find that Amazon often has the most affordable often has the most affordable options. Not always, but but most of the time it does, and it allows the participant to have more options to choose from. Um, so we've come up with a little process for using Amazon when you're when you're purchasing home furnishings. Um, uh, you'll first um, uh, using the the examples of previously approved home furnishings and household items document that I have mentioned it's in the policy. Um, that form you want to use that to review um, what we typically cover um, and select items that the participant would like to purchase. Um, and necessary household items not included in the form may also be requested, um, but those are just like the standard ones we usually, that we usually um, see come through and that we approved. Um, and so then after that, you'll review the, look up those items in Amazon and allow the participants to choose their preferred color, and style for their requested items, and then create an Amazon wish list for what is decided their selected items are. Um, and then you're gonna copy and paste that Amazon wish list URL into the request form. And then it goes, once it's approved and it goes to the community action board, what they do is they have their own separate Amazon account that they go in and um, pick out the ones that you've selected and um, purchase it on their end with their credit card. Um, and then they'll mail the, those items to the, the address that you have been on the form. Um, or Amazon. So um, that's how our Amazon process. Um, Direct re reimbursement. We can we can directly reimburse you for item purchased um, uh, on behalf of participants. Um, you may direct you or you may request this. Um, but to receive payment, your agency must provide its W nine form. Um, you know, and you'll also need to submit a receipt and proof of payment along with the invoice. Um, and if you don't get pre approved for these types of purchases a payment will not be reimbursed. So you're gonna to wanna to check in with us first about it um, before you move forward. And we don't do this too often, but it is an option if needed in a pinch, say when a vendor can't wait for a check to arrive um, um, to deliver a particular service. Uh, next slide. Hey Monica, there's quite a few questions in the chat. With to go over questions, but um, but so yeah, let's just wrap it up. This up, we're almost done. Um, and then and then we can go through and open this up. Um, so um, then once the form is submitted, uh, we review all applications on our end. We that we receive, we review to make sure the participant's eligible. Um, and that they're not already enrolled in another program that would provide them the services that that you're requesting. Um, uh, well, as far as um, housing programs within HMIS, we have access to that. Um, we will review um, expenses um, and whether or not 
they're permissible, allowable with this fund and review all the backup supplemental documentation that you submit with this and um, evaluate the reasonableness of the request um, and also just kind of decide whether other options should be explored first that we know of that are available in the community. Um, so just reiterating, there is a limited amount of funding available here in this, this housing assistance fund. And just want to make sure you all really know that even if you're a participant, meets all the eligibility criteria and all this, everything is, is eligible and approvable um, as far as like the expenses, um, types of expenses we would, per we would cover. Um, not all requests may be approved. If we run out of funding, we won't be able to. So, and, and we'll make sure to keep you current on in, any information where it stands, what types, you know, there might be a situation where we're out of funding for a particular type of population. So those requests, will, we won't be able to approve. So we'll keep that information posted on the website and also share it um, via other channels, probably our Housing for Health Partnership newsletter um and make sure that you guys have this information um okay so then once it's approved um and sent off the cab if it's if they receive the form by 2 p.m on a business day it'll be reviewed oh sorry 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 i'm sorry if it comes to us by 2 p.m we will review it the same business day um and then um and if it's approved we'll send it off to cab um that same day um and you'll be notified via DocuSign um whether the form the request is approved or denied if it is denied we'll we may follow back up with you to request additional information or documents that are needed for us to move forward with an approval um and then once once approved and we send it off to CAB, they will disperse um, payment within two business days. However, they they are really have the ability to be really quick. So if your payment is needed quicker, faster than within two business days, there's an area on the form that you can put a request for um, payment, expedited payment. You can indicate ASAP needed. And I've seen them, um, they're often really, really quick when they get those types of requests and can often provide payment same day. Um, it's not a guarantee, but they're usually really fast. Um, okay, we're almost done. So um, tracking and follow up. Uh, let's see, next slide. Um, okay, so each my S requirements. Um, so both CAB and you all will be provide will be entering HMIS records. CAB is going to be completing a financial service transaction record that includes the amount of funding issued. So after they've dispersed the funds, they're going to go into HMIS and enter um, how much it has been provided. Um, next slide. Is it not working? Oh, okay. Okay. Um, and then provider agencies. There's um, it's a little so it's a little different. If you're a coordinated entry connector that is working with the participant through housing problem solving as part of coordinated entry. Those transactions will be recorded as an event, a coordinated entry event within the Housing for Health Partnership program. Um, you know, cord connectors that have oh, programs, uh, sorry, the coordinated entry program in HMAS has a little bit of a different setup. They don't use service records, they use events. They are all labeled the same, but I just wanted to make a note of this, that connectors will do use the Housing for Health Partnership um, coordinated entry program to enter records or events. Um, and then for all other providers, you would be um, entering 
your service records um, within the program that your participant is enrolled in, in your, within your menu of programs. Um, and for both parties, you'll be using the same record. It's titled the same, whether it's an event or service record, and that is assistance securing one-time housing assistance fund. And so you'll be entering this at the time that you make the request, that you submit the request. Um, okay, and then lastly is follow-up. So CAB will be doing post-assistance calls with primarily with the participants at three and six months after we provide this assistance. So it's really critical. That's another reason why you got to make sure their contact, your participants' contact information is current at the time that you make the request at least. Um, and so they will be calling, you know, we really want to know how, how effective this program is to helping participants mean to, uh, get housed and maintain their housing. And so they'll be making follow-up survey calls with them um, and, and, and potentially with you all as well in the event that they need additional data or maybe additional information on how they might be able to reach a participant, say if their contact information is inaccurate at the time that they make those calls. So just letting you all know that, that CAD might be calling you all up to seven months after the assistance is provided about your participant that you supported through this. And please let your participants be aware that they may also be contacted by, or they will be contacted by the Community Action Board if assistance is provided. And I think that's it. So now we can open it up to Q&A. Um, so, uh, let's see. Should we start, anybody want to shout anything out or should do you want me to go through the questions that are presented in the chat? I got my hand up. And uh, okay. I also okay. put in a couple okay. questions. <laughs> Um, cool. so, All right. uh, so first, first question, and this one has come up in discussion in the past too. Um, sober living environments, they're generally not can don't generally they're quote unquote, they don't have formal rental agreements, uh, because they usually their um, tenancy doesn't usually get covered by usual tenancy law, because if they break certain household rules, they can more or less immediately be exited from their from the household as opposed to being given like 30 to 60 day notice to do so. Um, so, and, but a lot of those programs also still require a, um, a security deposit. Uh, can these funds be used for that purpose? Yeah, I know you sent me that email or Adriana that email recently about that. And I haven't responded yet because um, I'm trying to kind of figure out, I don't really have a, um, uh, well thought out response to this yet. Um, I think sadly it's, 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 it's a little complicated and it probably needs, we probably need to talk through those requests individually on a case by case basis. So, um, uh, I think what's probably needed if you're wanting to support someone with an SLE, in, in SLE is we need to have kind of some more detail around the, the, service, the length of stay that the that they're likely to be able to stay there. We're gonna we're gonna want some sort of uh probably some sort of proof of the ability to stay that it, you know they it, typically there's not a lease involved with those. So some sort of an agreement. Um so like a length of, gonna... like a length of sobriety or like an agreement with like the the SLE that they'll abide by like you know a traditional rental agreement format or something like that instead of um, just like maybe uh no kind of like we need to have information about the parameters of that particular SLE and about the stay um because they all kind of vary in a yeah. lot of different ways so um I'm going to still kind of dig into it some more, and if it would be helpful, I can add that information to the policy. Okay, cool. Um, I had another question. Uh, so a lot of times we get requests for uh, like deposits funds or homeward bound funds. 
uh, but it's something that we may not necessarily be doing like, you know, direct connector work with, like dedicated connector work with, because, you know, we're a, you know, a hub of, you know, services. Um, so people hear more about the assistance and so they'll come to us to try and figure out like how they can get those services. Um, we were originally like, you know, recording those notes in uh, or those directions in like diversion and then later on it was smart path and then we were trying to do it in in a coordinated entry but you asked us not to put it in coordinated entry so i'm just asking where should we record it for like our agency or where should we put the notes for those requests on our part yeah i was i've heard about um there's been talk about, I think, creating a separate program for your um, team that, no, just guys see her. I'm not, into, I'm not sure what, what, how this setup will be for your particular team that doesn't have a, a program and is working with clients outside of coordinated entry. We're gonna need to explore that further. Um, uh, so uh, it's on my list. I'll, I'll start talking to get focus about this for you. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I think diversion is diversion is still like a program, at least under housing matters. It is. Um, and Monica Lauren and I can follow up with you as well, because um, we had a discussion right. regarding this, and then we can add it to the policies and the information and get back to you, Brian. Okay. Um, you. In the meantime, what would you like us to do? Um. So there is, you can put in notes and information that aren't connected to a program. Yeah. So you just want to put in the note, just notes. At just this point. Notes. Yeah. yeah. But it's likely to change. We'll get, we'll get you that information when it's ready. All right. Thank you. For the most part, though, like most, I think your team is is the only one that we're aware of that would not be um, providing the service as part of a program. Uh, so I don't I I think that for everybody else here, you're going to be entering these records within the program that your participant is enrolled in. Yeah, I mean that's why I figured like you know since Housing Matters still has diversion as a program. Um, we could just use that, but I mean, I want I want to go by like whatever you guys want to do. Obviously, okay. if you guys want us to just use like the general profile notes section, then I guess we'll just use that for now. Okay. Okay. Does anybody else have any questions? Uh, there was a question about uh, needing a DocuSign account to fill out the form, and uh, you do not need one. Um, if for some reason you find yourself uh, an account is completely free, uh, so, yeah, nothing, nothing special needed to sign. Okay, yeah, I saw that in the chat. Uh, um, yeah, these questions, Joseph, you asked, um, is lease interchangeable with rental agreement? Yes, the same, same term. Um, we've seen them it labeled both ways. Um, and then Blanca asked, can you request rental deposit and furniture? Yes, you can. Um, and um, as long as it's within um, the annual uh, cap that we covered. Um, uh, Joseph, I was under the impression that they were more or less the same thing. Um, I'm not sure what that, that meant. So, that was Brian, oh, Brian answering me about rental agreement versus lease. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Thank you. <laughs> um, okay, will Jasmine ask, will we be able to access these slides later? Yes, sure. I can actually put them on the same web page that I had mentioned, so you guys can have that. Um, and then, um, oh, let's see. Will application, Father Joseph asked, will application approval denial via DocuSend generate an email to the person or agency who submitted the application? The Daniel, answer to that is yes. Yes, yes. Yes, that's what I thought. Okay. 
It will, I know it says an approval. I wasn't exactly sure about the denial, but yes, it sounds like yes, both will, you will, either way, you will get a, a DocuSign notification. Um, Justin, the Housing Authority would like to know these funds are available to families with housing choice vouchers, including vouch VAS vouchers, and voucher holders apply for repairs that could help a unit pass. Yes, we can also use this to assist with, with those types of um, needs as well. Um, okay, I already answered Brian's question. And then moving on down, Father Joseph, I'd like more details about how each of tracking requirements work. Um, yeah, Father Joseph, do you have any specific questions about this um, that I can provide you some more information? Yeah, I'm Come just, uh, I'm not exactly sure within HMIS what it is we're supposed to be doing for tracking requirements. How does that work? Are we just oh, entering well, notes so tracking, or? Well, tracking is kind of more like done on our end it's as far as like um, tracking the assistance provided is um, entered and um, uh, eligible and the, the outcomes are in there, but documentation um, requirements on your side is you're going to go into program enrollment, not the enrollment, sorry, the actual program and um, enter under, under your services section within the program uh, and select the financial assistance record or um, referral to financial assistant. Oh gosh, what is, how is it worded? Um, yeah, I, I think that that aspect of HMIS is not available to our agency because we're not actually recognized as a shelter or emergency shelter. It's kind of a problem. Well, we, if you, um, can you, so we, got, we, we, we worked it out with okay so that they're going to make that available to all users um and so if you don't see it yes if you go in now and you don't see it please let us know maybe they haven't done it yet jessica i'm not sure they were supposed to um deploy that okay after we're done here i'll look again and if it isn't available okay. i'll submit a support ticket yeah or, sure yeah could you, could you do that and um could you cc lauren and myself sure. um thank you either way it's gonna that one particular record and and it will be available for everybody to use if you haven't seen it before so so stay tuned it will be in your menu of available options for service records muy bueno thank you you're welcome. Um, I think that was all that I can see in the chat. Does anybody else have any other questions or comments um, about the Housing Assistance Fund? Oh, I see Jacob's hand is up. Yeah, um, this one might have already been answered, but um, back on the, the eligible and allowable costs um, slide. Um, it said educational materials. And I was just wondering, would that potentially be extended to like college application fees? Like if someone wanted to apply to a program or is it just for the people who are, are our clients who are already students looking to stabilize their education? Yeah, we've never really I've seen that before, but if if um if that if whatever is tied needed for educational expenses is not provided through um, financial assistance through an educational um, institution, then we can explore the potential for covering it through this. Great, thank you. Oh, Chloe. 
Thank you so much for this training. This is super helpful. Um, I had a question about the the big box on the DocuSign with the request description, should that essentially just be a copy and paste from the Clarity note, um, just describing the request? Yeah, you can do that. It's really kind of intended since right now, up until now, um, you guys have all been um, emailing us. Oh, most people have included a pretty thorough email with the description or rest for why they're requesting the assistance. And since we're kind of moving away from emailing and kind of so yeah, you can enter what you're putting in as a record and any additional information you feel like we need on our end to, okay. to thank you to approve. We are to I ask, we submit the request. Is that correct? Once we submit the request or once it's approved? Yeah. Once you submit it, you or at the time of submission, either right before or right after you submit it. Um, and then once it's approved and the check has the funds have been dispersed, CAD enters on their end. Um, that that is then what has been paid. And in the event that it gets denied on the agency side, are we to go back and delete that entry? Um, you can update it, I believe. You don't have to delete it. It's okay to have it in there as, as to show a reflection that you've submitted a request, um, but you don't have to delete it. You, you would, you, it, if it's, it would be helpful, I think, to update it to, set, to say that it was denied, um, but it's not really necessary because if there's not a subsequent cab transaction, um, it, that indicates that the service wasn't financed. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, any other questions? Uh, let's see, can the system be more agile and use API to talk to each other so that data that doesn't need to be? Yeah, that would be pretty awesome. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I wish we could, I wish AI could do all of our work for us. Wouldn't that be nice? <laughs> Um, anyway, no, just kidding. Um, any, any other questions, concerns, thoughts? If not, we can wrap up a little bit early. And, um, again, I'll, I'll send you all an email as the website is live. Um, and I just really want to thank you for your time. And I'm super excited that we're, we're launching this and giving you guys this awesome new resource. Um, so, uh, so yeah, we're here for you, um, to support you. If you have any questions, um, along the way, please email us, um, housing for health at Santa Cruz County .us or, um, or give us a call and, um, and, oh, I see Tracy has her hand up. Might have missed it, but I'm wondering, um, like our colleagues that weren't able to make this training, do they just watch the recording and then they're able to make requests or how does that work? Yeah, so we asked that if someone hasn't been able to, to do this, they, they watch the recording and they read the policy document that's on the website so that they have all the details. Um, and then uh, just something else to note, now, uh, starting now, we're no longer going to accept the old form. Um, I think that goes without saying, but just 
just uh, wanted to make sure you guys all knew that and your colleagues know that if they submit, um, if they submit the old form, we'll, we'll just send it back and say, no, you've got to go through the, the new process. All right, guys. Well, Thank I you. really appreciate this. Thank you so much. And I hope you all have a nice weekend. Thank you Thank so much. You. This was awesome. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Bye.